She's bad. She's bold. She's fast. This is more than a race. This is Talladega. The second to last chance to make the playoffs. The penultimate race sees Cody Forge, a home pole setter, and the Savage Toy Shell 500. How about that? What a story. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Talladega Super Speedway, the biggest and baddest track on the CCS calendar, the OG, as they like to say. While we have other super speedways, this was the OG super speedway where names were made here and dreams come true. As I said, Cody Forge is on the pole, but before we get to Talladega, let's do a little recap and a re- rewind with Zach from last week. Zach, take that away. Yeah, last week we had a pretty much train race. Dripsy Scheib was able to go back-to-back wins with Martinsville, which was interesting. And then Kansas was also interesting. We had we He was actually the only car that was really showing anything different from anyone else. He was really fast, was able to put together some... Uh, Led all the laps and uh, ended up winning the race. Now has the points lead coming into the final race. Uh, or he's got two races to hold it uh, between him and Barney Thresher III, who's starting a row behind him. Uh, Dripsy, he's got that uh, points lead by 11 points. So along with this playoff discussion, we also have the uh, points lead discussion for the season standings points championship. So we'll see how that all goes out. Other than that, last week was pretty uneventful in the Cup Series. But other than, and uh, Dripsy, again, went back-to-back back with wins. He is tied with Barney Thresher's third and Joy Paints. All three of those drivers have three wins this season. Yep, safe to say Dripsy Shive is definitely tasting the rainbow right now at the right time. Let's go to those five people, though, in the playoff discussion. Let's look at our first five. Let's look at uh, Zion, the first guy, at plus 30. Uh, for Zion, you got to think you're at Talladega starting mid-pack. It's all about surviving. Right, this is a race where you don't have to win. Maybe start thinking about pit cycles right now. We'll talk about that in a second. He's won quadruped, chef squid, and crazy BGD. All the same kind of boat, to name a few. They're pretty much 13th through 16th on the bubble. Their goal is to survive, get a decent amount of points. You know what? Maybe steal a couple points, lead a lap, right? This race could flow early. We do have some tire work we're going to talk about. But for someone like Bradley Ream, Zevil, Nelson, Fireball 48, you know what to do. Offense, offense, offense. What do you got to lose? This is your best shot to win. Not only win and gain a lot of points, but probably your best shot to really make a statement because we know Michigan can tend to be a race where spread out and strategy tends to rule the day. Here, it's unexpected. Anything can happen. It's Talladega. Zach, let's kind of talk about uh, one to watch here, though, at the front by giving us a top 10 starter rundown while I give keys to the race. Go for it. All right, yeah, so obviously we got our ones to watch with uh, guys that are usually good at super speedways. Cody Forge, he did have a win this season at Denver Motorsports Park. That was super speedway. You know, putting on the last lap pass, he's starting pole. Starting second, NH, who has been very, very consistent this season. One of Old Spice, hasn't had any other wins to show for it. However, you cannot deny their consistency. They're currently third in standings. Daniel Pauls Jr., he's had a slump the past few races, but uh, or, well, a few races back, but has starting to been picking it up. Super Speedway is definitely probably not his strong point. He hasn't won any Super Speedway races in his CCS career. Uh, in fact, he uh, was the only car to finish, or he was one of the few cars that did not finish on the lead lap at Daytona in the Jazz 500 due to a mechanical issue. Uh, we won't really factor that into this, but uh, also a uh, teammate to the 60 certain poll, so we'll see if that draft becomes a thing on the beginning of this race. 37 again, just calm. Part-time driver coming into the cup to get his get his feet wet. Uh, he's not really got a whole lot to say about him. So we'll just move on to Zevil. Again, one of those playoff guys we were talking about who's below, Head two. but not out. He's not really one to watch, I'd say, for super speedways, but him being in the situation he's in, we'll see what he does. Quadruped, he's usually he's been up and down all season long. Uh, I expect this race to be no different for him. Uh, he's he's definitely going to be seeing how he does. Pause for the command. Start your engines. There's the command. Thank you, Zach, for that little rundown. We'll get to the rest of the top ten. There are time when we get a restart. Uh, another thing to note, let's do these fast five facts. Our first fact of the day is definitely going to be the draft. We saw in practice a lot of people angling and cutting the corner, trying to stay to the yellow line. It's going to be all about line movement in the in the race, especially when strategy comes into play. Uh, tire wear will be interesting to note, as I said. 
Another thing to note, too, is teammates. I mean, it could be possible that we see some teammates working together at the front. And who can stay in the line the longest? It seems like when you stay in line, you just gain more suck-up speed with the next-gen car. The air is underneath the underbody. It creates more wake, creates more flow to the, the side. And there's no side draft in these cars, so that should be something to note. And uh, it's Talladega. Of course, you got to expect the big one. It may not happen, but if it does, watch out. Who can avoid it? Cody Forge in front of his home crowd. As you see the crowd standing up on his feet, he's talked about in the past how this race not only means a lot because he sponsors it with the Cody Forge uh, Savage 2500, but he's going to try to do it for those uh, American soldiers out there. The green flag is in the air. Cody Forge leads us to green at the baddest track on the calendar. It's already got some guys into the wall as they span out four wide as Cody Forge looks to break away for a second. That 45 going low to prevent that teammates getting together with the 22 and the 60. Then you notice that we saw in practice the third lane was useless. Let's see if that continues. Cody Ford is going to go up to the 17 and block a little bit. Zevil is going to go down with no help. He's still gaining speed, but he's got run. some help now. Huge run coming here from Sammy in the box. Joy Paints as they almost go four wide back there. Out of run, just ran out of draft. Yeah, Dino, as I like to say on the straightaways, Cody Ford's looking to lead lap one in front of his home fans. Will he get a chance? He should get it now as Sammy DeBach looks for second. Oh, he tucks back in. Cody Ford's will lead lap one. Good good, uh, good omen there right now, but it's not about how you start, it's how you finish. As they nearly almost hit the wall, it's NH barely missing it. Now you see the top three starting to break away. Joy Payne's trying to break away as well. The inside lane is gaining steam. That we saw this in practice. Once you get to that third lane, that next-gen car with the wing, it just diffuses. Here comes Zevil, though. Joy Pates is going to go with him. Let's see what Zevil can do on the inside of Cody Forge. Can use a little side draft here. Going to have a nice run there on the inside with Joy Pates. XL back there as well. I believe that's Sean Ard. There's so many MRE cars in the field. I think it's Ard making his way to the front. Yep, Sean Ard. Oh, here we go. Four wide. Cody Ford's got to be careful now. Does he hit the wall here coming into one? Does he lay off a little bit? Oh, they're going to lay off each other. Great piece of driving there is Joy Paints and Ard at the front now on the inside looking to break away. Here comes Joy Paints, though. She's going to go to the top. It's going to be a little cycle fest, but does she use the trap on the outside? Nope. Ard's going to get that inside run short distance. Here comes three wide from Eli. You know, the wolf underneath looking for that lead. Does get it right now. He's going to have some help from behind. All right. Looks like Eli is going to shuffle back. It's definitely looking at... What do you think, Zach? So far, guys are still turning their quickest laps early. A little cycle fest. Is that what we expect here? A little different type of racing for sure. Yeah, somewhat of a cycle fest is what I'm seeing. We'll see how aggressive they get. Uh, four wide is definitely very aggressive to start. I, I didn't see any of that in the test, to be real with you. No, and the one thing to note, too, sometimes in the test, we do see teams testing, experimenting with dyno packages. The engine package is big on the next-gen car. With how the engine is, uh, you know, turned with the horsepower up now, with this being a pretty much horsepower-resistant race as the speeds, as Joy nearly hits the wall back there, around 200 miles per hour topping out, and corner speed is around 193. There's no fall-off between corner to exit, and that gives uh, the dyno and the engineers behind the scenes in the engine department a lot to work on. See who's the best dyno for sure. They nearly go four wide. Back to the front, though. Let's see, what we got Yuiko on the outside. Looks like that's Lethal Mortar leading as they, oh, nearly go four wide back there. They are four wide. Yes, they are. That's Sean Art back there. Yuiko is in it. Kazo. Can they make it through? They're going to sort it out right now. As you continue to see, two-tenths fall off is the limit right now. We'll see if that continues to pick up. Now, here comes a pass here. Is that dark? It is dark. Dark rain for the lead. Dark rain looking on the inside. And uh, it's a perfect time, Zach, to throw it back, baby. Spotter cam. Let's go on board with dark rain from the helicopter cam. Let's see what the spotter sees. All right, Dark, you got the 48 back there, 48 back there, 48 back there, 48, lines even, lines even, lines even, lines even, lines even, lines even, 48, tucking low, tucking low, 
Watch the middle. No help middle. No help middle. No help middle. Help coming. Help coming. Help coming. Help coming. They ditched him. They ditched him. 48 low. Side trap. Side trap. 40. 49. Backing up. Backing up. Dragging the break. Drag the break. Drag the break. Drag the break. All right. You got some help on the top. Stay outside. Stay outside. Shuffle back. Shuffle back. 48's going to come with you. 48's going to come with you. A little side trap. Here comes the 9 and the 40 below. Inside. Inside. Three wide. Three wide. Back out of it. Use a little straightaway speed. Back out of it. 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 All right. Stay up top. Stay up top. Stay up top. We'll shuffle. We'll shuffle back, Dark. 10-4, boss. All right. So that's basically a lap around Talladega. You see, Dark. He has to figure out who and what and the timing of the lines will be. It's about to, uh, right now. It's about a shuffle fest. It's not about how you go in there. We talked about Fireball 48, 20th in points. Zach needs a lot. This is a good start, leading a lap early. Um, just, I think uh, fin uh, one lap ain't gonna do it, but uh, we'll see what he does. Jonah Burge right behind him, who's literally only five points behind him in standings. So Jonah Burge from down under trying to get a lap led here. Let's see what he can do. As you see, Drummer Chick as well trying to go. Looks like Jonah's gonna have no help. It's gonna come back with. X Gaming, but he's going to just side draft a little bit, have the inside momentum, and should be able to clear before they get to four. Yep, he does. All right, Jonah Burridge now. Let's see what he does here. One note, loses a little help right there. Still going to be side by side with Fireball here at the line. Give it to Jonah Burridge, I believe. Yep. By inches, yeah. We don't have the ticker up. We're going to get the ticker up in a second, but. There's the ticker. Thank you, Zach. Uh, so far, though, right now this race is turning into a shuffle fest. We see about a tenth and a half ball. Now, the, the, the strategy involved in this race is going to be if we don't get a caution between laps 10 through 20, uh, you probably would think this is a one-stop race with tire fall off. Uh, we don't know if it's a one-stopper, but if you would think a one-stopper would work. You see Bird, who was pretty slow in practice, now starting to just flex his muscles. It shows that this race could be a uh, pitch strategy and when to come in. If you come in later with an overcut, less fuel. If you on the first run, you probably want to pack it between six and twelve people, right? You have twenty people in the pack, you're going to trip on each other. Versus six to twelve, it's a good number. You get in there, have a nice draft, get up to speed quick, and stay in line. Staying in line and pitch strategy will win this race. It's not gonna be who has the fastest uh, car in the beginning for sure, as Bird leads. Let's go to the back of the pack, Zach. Let's see how our, our friends in the back are doing. You see Chef Squid now in the top ten. If we got Joy Paints, Zevil, right? Started up front, and look what they're going to do. Whoop, right to the back. They're going to do a little speed run, see how fast they can go. So let's say lap nine. They took about nine laps to get to the back. Let's see how fast they get back to the front. Our fastest lap of the day is Weeb at a 47.93. That is approximately about 198, I think, 196 around that range, which makes sense because they are topping off around 199 in the pack, and they're slowing down about 193-ish. So about 196 to 198, depending on who catches the pack for fast laps. Sometimes you can catch a fast one, too, by cutting one. See Zevil back there. But Talladega is all about who has the uh, the best suck-up. It's not about the fastest car sometimes, but who has the best suck-up and timing, for sure, when we get the pit stops. Let's go back to the front now. We see Bird still leading. He's going to have a little bit of help on the outside. You can just see. That inside line, the shorter distance with Brad Stover, just cuts better. It's more fluid. The motion's better with the steering wheel, especially this rack and pinion steering with Bobby Isaac behind. Watch how he just uses a little angle tail. Cuts up high, but Bobby Isaac says, you know what? I'm going to ditch you. Go to the inside, but then he gets shuffled out with a little crossover fade. Great job by Brad there to use a little crossover fade. He'll lead that lap as we enter lap 11 right now. All right, Zach, one sixth of the race through. Thoughts on this race so far? Just a little... Uh, break in the action between? Yeah, we're, we're sitting, starting to see those pullaways a little bit more often. That third line is not really good right now, but you see there's a lot fewer takers up there, especially in the corners. And, uh, watch this 07 car. He was our spring winner. He's trying to go back to back at Talladega here. See what he does. Part time driver. Let's go on board with that 97, Zach. I want to see something here. Let's give the fans a little bit of a show of what it's like to drive a lap around Talladega Super Speedway. As the uh, cockpit or roof? The yeah, we'll go roof cam. Why not? All right, roof cam. Here we go with Zion. You see, he's entering the trial for now. He's going to use a little proof fade action, get a nice little arc into the center right there. Stick to that yellow line. Just gain speed. Now, watch the sucker break. Great move there by the 82 there. Just to 
go a little high. Inside, still looking lower just to get some cool air on the left side of the car. Stay tucked up. Almost use a little two-car tandem with the diffuser. Now he tucks out a line. Boom. A little side draft here. You watch into the corner just a little bit. Not much. Tucks to that yellow line. And bang, he's going to take the lead. Now, you can't see it, but his spotter's probably telling him someone's going to look low. What do you do? Early in the race, you probably don't block the quadruped. Later in the race, you just see Khan go low. You probably block that move. And this is probably the simulation. What he just did, watch the last lap. This is the last lap of the race. Boom. He wins the race. He uses a little bit more of the outside to get the speed with the banking. And uses that runoff, in a way. He uses that excess run. Is, oh, nearly four wide. Oh, we do have four wide. That Paulus Jr. I think that's Ard. No, Sammy in the box let off. Oh, no, he didn't. There's still four wide. This could be big. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. They're going to get away with it, though. Great oh, respectful driving by the field. Great respectful driving. They'll get away with it right now. Back at the front, though. Look at that. What did we just say, Zach? We talked about the guys in the back with Cody Forge. Twelve and a half laps. He started at the front, let a couple, and boom. He's back to the front. What does it tell you about the race? It's cycle fest. Right now, the tires are just not falling off. I would say it's probably cloudy conditions. There are some sun peeking through these clouds. and It's keeping the tires cool, which means with no tire fall off, it's just a cycle fest. And usually with no tire fall off, means strategy is going to be harder to predict. We might be able to see an undercut work today. Normally, I would say no, but for the first pit stop, if we do have two, it's undercut. If it's just one, let's say past lap 28, it's going to be whoever pits the latest with the less fuel on board. We could see a two-stop race, potentially, and see someone try a time of yellow, but most likely we won't. Let's go back to our points leader and second in points. Let's go let's talk about our points leader, Dripsy Chai. Uh, that's your last week's winner. He's just hanging at the back, and that's I don't think it's a bad strategy. You know, right now, it's it's a, it's all about placement. He's probably learning that he's 14 laps in. He's probably telling his crew chief what the car feels in the draft. Maybe at the front, it was just a little bit weird. With the front turn, out the back, you got the dirty air, but guess what? You can save fuel, which is big. In the front, you're burning more fuel when you lead a line. Back, you can just pretty much go 50 to 40% on the throttle on the straights and, you know, just check up in the corners a little bit. Maybe go 60% if you really have to. And that two to three extra laps of fuel could be big. Barney Thrasher. Let's go, let's go up to Barney Thrasher. Zach, the cameraman, going to pan to Barney Thrasher leading this race, possibly. He goes underneath, or he's going to stick in line. Nope, he sticks in line. Doing what he's got to do, right? He doesn't have to be a hero today. He knows he's just got to watch that 54 for the regular season chip. And just, uh, you know, look for that number one seed. There's nothing really else to say. The crew chief's probably telling him 54 is way back there. Start playing with your uh, your bias at the front. You know What I mean by bias is you start playing with the, the cars around. You feel the air. You really can't change much on a super speedway with settings. As you see, he goes for the lead. Shangle follows with. Does Shangle ditch him? Nope, he sticks in line. And that's all you can do. Just play with the air. See what your car is like up front. And then start making a move. Joy Paints. We talked about her from the back to the front to the front to the back. Just playing with the setup, playing with the air. NH started up front today. Let's see where he's at. He's, he was another one probably playing with the air. Yeah, now he's going to play with the air a little bit. Go to the mid-pack, see what your car handles and feels like in the mid-pack. You don't have to be at the front. And this is the great thing, Zach, about this racing. You don't have to be at the front right now. It's all about learning your car. It's still a long way to go. We have 41 laps to go. A pit stop to come. You're going to find a little bit more success if you start playing with the setups and the arrow, in my opinion, when you're at the front versus when you're at the back. So when you're in the middle of the pack, all the air is being sucked in there. It's going to handle poor. But when you're leading in line two, you also have to realize you're burning more fuel. It's that constant ebb and flow. Do you want to burn more fuel uh, and potentially risk an overcut strategy to someone at the back? Or you go in the middle saying, hey, you know what, we're going to save fuel, but the car's not going to handle well, potentially at the end of the race, and we have a short run to the finish in a potential caution situation, you're probably going to go right to the back because you weren't at the front, testing your limits on handling and acceleration. It's not much, but if you can figure out a little bit about handling and acceleration, save a little bit in the pack and understand it, you'll get to the front knowing, hey, I have the confidence. So let's see who can make that breakaway at the front right now. We'll go back to the front of the pack. It's still Shangle? I don't think so. I think he's been shuffled. No, he's still there. Dark's with him. 
And you wonder, you got to start to wonder a little bit of friendship, maybe. Uh, we've seen some cars in Manufacturer's Act. We saw it at Daytona. We saw it at Cars Land a little bit. Not much, but a little bit of Cars Land, too. Manufacturer alliances and, and, and pseudo teammates. You see maybe cars that look similar on track seem to work together well, for sure. Yeah, I'm seeing those Dodges. They're just kind of getting in where they fit in and making it work. And uh, the Fords seem to be a little bit more willing to work with the Dodges than the Chevys do from what I've noticed a little bit here. Little single file train now for the first five cars. Looks like the six cars trying to clear. That is Drummer Chick. And she will not clear, believe it or not? Nope, well not clear. But it's wonder it's it's interesting as you see Dark Rain make a move on her shangle right here. You start to see a little bit of the same moves that are being made. After a couple laps they get into that five five uh, car salute, they all train and then boom. Usually second and fourth make the move. And that's uh, Evan H champion. Can't forget the champion of the sport there. Fifth just kind of falls in line and goes with whoever as you see he gets shuffled out now. But it may not cost him a lot because he's going to get a little bit of side draft. And he might get some help on that middle lane right there. Boom. He's going to get a help from Dark Rain. who use a little bit of side tow. Side draft as Dark now leads the pack. Let's see what Dark does out front. There's Fireball there. Third in line in the inside. We talked about him with the point situation. Starting to flex and show his muscles. Yeah, see, so they don't have enough of a run. But, but Drummer Chick is going to take that run. Has help from Fireball. Not the same fight. You see, it's different. When there's a five-car train, the dynamics of the air shift between second and fourth. When it's just a one or two-car train, it's about setting it up at the last lap. Let's see what Fireball does here. This is coming to the white flag. That's what he's simulating right now. That's what these drivers go through. That's what the crew chiefs are telling them. Simulate that white flag lap. Where's the, di where's the distance, the proper etiquette you need to be on that last lap? You see, right there, it's a good distance, but the problem is you run out of space because the way the banking is off of turn four into the trioval. It really favors the outside on a run. And there's your 400s. That's just all uh, studying and understanding the tape. Let's see how Fireball, down, Fireball does now. Let's see. Does he just surrender here and give up the lead and say, I'm going to shuffle back? Looks like it. And that will be who leading that. I can't tell with the number on that car. Yeah, Reggie Fogelman. Reggie Fogelman leading this race now. Are just going to do a little block there? Yep, Reggie's let's see how Reggie does now. Nelson there in the back. There's Jeff or Gaff Gordon. Let's see what Jeff can do. Gaff can do. Let's see what he's, he's got. He's a new player at the front. That's Sony D42. Now Reggie's going to give up the lead here. Zion comes to the front with him. Lap 22. We're getting close to those pit stops, Zach. We're not too far away now. Yeah, if I were to guess, I think around the pit window would probably be between lap 32 to lap 38, would probably be my assumption on when they're going to try to start coming in. They, some may try to come in earlier, some later. Or, well, no, no one can go later. Now, but We saw in the 500, if I, memory can always be shady and whatnot, but I remember Daniel Paulus, I believe, had a mechanical failure, brought out a caution. That's so true. You do want you, you to budget that. Uh, you want to budget that in, because if you don't budget for a caution on a cycle, you're going to get hoses, I like to say. Most of these crew chiefs are budgeting for a mechanical failure. We don't get a wreck. <sighs> With these engineers and the way the engine departments work, someone could be pushing a dyno and well, just as I say, they go four wide. Well, let's watch this four wide now. Reggie Fogelman now in the middle. Can he make it last? The answer is yeah. I believe Nelson just backs out of it. Now he'll... Yep, he'll back out. We're back to three wide. Great piece of driving by everybody. New leader at the front. I believe it's Zion. Yeah, that's big for him. We were talking about playoff situation, but a points lead is also a situation as a 54 trying to get around. Huge point looking for that 54. Like I said, one extra lap led. That could be the difference between not winning a regular season championship or winning it. Now, listen, it's the regular season championship. What does that do anything? It's pride, right? These teams go 30 weeks knowing, hey, it comes down to one race at Michigan. No, it's 29 races before that to get all the points you can amass and get that win. It's big for the 54 team to get that, not only for the driver, but the crew chief the pit crew, and the guy's back at the shop. So he's definitely looking for something to race here. They go four wide again. Starting to see that a little more prevalent. Yeah, it's starting. It's, you know what that tells you, Zach? The aggression's picking up. And they know the pit stop. Pit stops are going to be the way you win this race. Watch this. Now, interesting. You see right now? Watch how Dripsy did. He, he forced NH up the track. It's going to allow Jonah to get underneath. Now he should be able to cut Jonah off and at least keep the lead into turn three at minimum. Now watch Jonah with the suck-up. Boom. Cuts to that yellow line. 
Not much help other than Cody Forge coming back with the one. Yep, Cody Forge is now going to just stick with the 121 of Jonah Burridge. They're going to stay in line. Look at this, Zach. Five cars are about to break. I have a feeling. We got one, two, three. Ooh, I think... No, wow. So you see, you would think five cars would break there, but that tells you all the friends and all the testing is out the window. Once you get the lap 27 and a half, 28, it's all bets are off. I think we're starting to see those five car trains are gone until we get the pit stops. Then maybe they'll come back for a lap or two to get single filed out. But they're starting to break away. The aggression's picking up and teams are starting to tell them time to start positioning yourself right. Save a little fuel as they almost go for. They might be pitting here. Let's see if they can do it cleanly if they do. Yep. There it is. There's the pit stops. There's the undercut. Jonah Burridge is going to bring about 10 cars into the pit lane. That's a pretty decent sized pack to be in, too. 10 cars. Not going to trip over. Look at the separation. Nice. Look at the separation for Dripsy, Shive, and Coden. Now, let's see how fast they get caught. Let's go up, let's go up over third place. What's, what's Evan H cooking right here? Let's see on the side, on the uh, suck up rate. Let's find out. He's not even moving that steering wheel. That's going to help. They go side by side, it's just more drag. It's going to help. He's going to start sniffing that. All right, now let's go Let's go back to spec cam. We'll see who pits this time around. Right, yep, we got some guys pitting. Evan's going to stay out, though. He's going to stay out. Oh! Oh! Oh, is that Reem? Oh, they made it work. That was close. Teammates, by the way, 17-28. An ancient re that, see, this is too big of a pack to tripping over each other. All right, Zach, let's go back to Jonah Burge. Where is he at on the track? Got to give the fans a perspective. How good was that pit stop by Jonah, and how fast did he get up to speed? That's going to be the key. Oh, yeah, he's got it. Nope, they're too spread out, too spread out. Let's see who's in second. Bird. Yeah, Bird, Bird's too, that's too much separation. They're not getting up to speed quick enough. Quadruped's good. That's a little two car tan. They could be able to they could catch up the bird. Jonah's gonna get caught. There's Joy. They all could get up there. They have to ironically, they almost have to start splitting up a little bit and start going Oh, look at this. Yep, what I say is that though, they're gonna get lucky. Because all those guys tripped each other up. Jonah Birds is gonna go right by them. Question is, oh that's That might be a legal entry on the green car. You got you can't cross the line until you get to the Back stretch. Who was that? That's Squid. Oh, he knew it too. He knew it. That's going to be a black flag. That's going to be a black flag for Chef Squid. You can't do that. You got to wait till the the, uh, the blend line on the back stretch. He should have known the rules. Let's take a replay of that. Let's take a replay of that. Now watch Chef Squid here. You see the blend line. Everyone's. Yeah, you can see you can't be out the track. That's dangerous. Someone else almost did it, but. Oh, yeah, he had all four. Yeah, you have all four. Yeah, you have all four off the line. That's going to cost you for sure. You can go ahead and pit for extra stuff there while he's in pit road. The 11 cars out. Yeah, let's see if anyone else blends illegally. Nope. 91 blended illegally there. And it looks like Tripsy, Shab, and Jonah are going to take the lead again. Wow. Let's see how this all cycles out. We're just waiting for pit cycles to cycle around. Let's see. So seeing they're pitting early, we may see... Uh, actually, no, no, not the 30s. I was thinking they were going to pit in the 30s. Yeah, no. I think uh, well, it could be for some. We could see some guys stretch. I think, uh, I think 20, 28 was... I meant to say 20s when I was saying 30s when fuel window was a, was a question. So it, it's going to be dependent on... It's going to be close for some guys. Uh, I'm going to say that much. Jonah he, gets a good lap sled here. That's good for him. It's good for Jonah. We got to feel for Chef Squid. I mean, what, what do we just talk about in, in the in the pre-race, right? Avoid mistakes. Now he's going to be lapped. Okay, I mean, that's a go. costly mistake. Most likely for a guy that pretty much had the 15 spot locked up. And now he's going to have to sweat it out of Michigan. And it just shows you. That's just unfortunate pressure error, right? It's an enforced error. All he had to do was just listen. Hey, listen to the blend line. They teach you in the driver's meeting, you can't go up and merge into traffic until you get past at least the... Uh, I'll show you for the fans out there. Right here, he merged up, right? Right there. 
You have to get past right about... Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Right to the Sunoco sign. Right there, you start to blend up a little bit. That's fine with two tires. And then right here, you should be able to blend fully. He did it way too early, and it's going to cost him potentially... <sighs> Probably a lap. I think, yeah, he's going to get caught. He'll be caught eventually. It's Cody Forge now dicing it up, the pole sitter. There's Joy Payne's Burridge. What, what are we thinking, Zach? 15 car pack, potentially? Uh, could, yeah, I think so. Th that's going to be interesting as well. Let's see who made it out of that pack. Let's go through a rundown through the field. Zach Willow 3 will do that rundown while I take this uh, little right. five-second or five-minute break here. Let's let Zach do some commentating with some inner little rundown. All right, yeah, right now leading Cody Forge. Let's see uh, Dripsy there in second. Gunther, uh, Gaming Freak. Yeah, I think we may see a uh, interesting. Uh, I want 15 cars. Uh, yeah, it's maybe 16. With the 03, and they may even fall back. So we could see even a smaller draft of 13 cars up in this lead draft. This just raises a question for the smaller drafts, which uh, them being single files gonna be important as well. So it's gonna be a two draft pack now. Another question is going to be two, two stops for some guys, one for others. We'll see how that blends out. Chip Squid about to get lapped. He's going to get lapped here sooner or later. As Cody Forge, pull sitter, and uh, race name leading. I don't believe in terms of playoff condition. I don't think he's really in contention uh, in that aspect. Uh, but uh, them being single file here, file here is very important. In terms of points and whatnot, Michigan is really going to be a last chance qualifier for a lot of these guys. Chef Squid, one of those guys who unfortunately merged on the track too early. That's going to cost him big time. Uh, he may got lucky with the, some laps if he did lead any. I'm not 100% sure. But Gaming Freak in the 82, he's going to dive down low here. He is already locked in. Two wins of the season, currently fifth, uh, fifth, or fifth in standings, if I'm not mistaken, fifth or sixth. Uh, he's looking really good right now. Uh, he's already locked in. Just get some laps. It's consistency. Jonah Burridge, who needs to be leading a lot of laps, and I will give him the benefit of the doubt. He's led a few. Um, we'll see how he does on that aspect. Uh, pit early. Um, so if if there is some guys that have to pit again, and some guys stay out, he's going to be at the short end of the stick on that. We'll see. Uh, but... He's a guy that definitely needs points. He's got a teammate right behind him, Daniel Pulse. And in the 60, Cody Ford's only one up here of the um, Wood Brothers cars that aren't up here is Brad Stover, who's in that second pack back there. Yeah, There's... I don't think that second pack. Let's, is Nelson catching up? Let's just find out. Oh, I think he's lost it. Yeah, he I lost think... the draft. I can see it right now. Yeah, he's lost it. Yeah, he's yeah he can sniff it all pack. he wants, but I don't think I think he's just gonna fall back more and more. So we have a 15 car pack. Now this changes the dynamics of the draft, right? Less cars means theoretically they can do it right. They all can pick together if they want to, and he can never catch up. Is that going to happen? Absolutely not. He's going to have to stay right here and hope that when pit stops occur, he's doing a great job snaking, catching the draft. Trying to get in that wake. Now, if you are Nelson, look at the second pack behind, though. Fireball leading that, basically. If they can get single filed out, and if they can catch, if say Paul is catching Squid at the wrong time, and he can Squid can hold them up for maybe a half a lap or even two laps, a half a lap to two laps even, Nelson will catch up. Those guys will gain about a second. And if, you know, they say the leader has a little bit more trouble than the guys in the second pap. We'll see. Let's go. Let's go up. Let's go. What was Quadruped's last lap, Zach? Let's go real data. What was this? Like 48. Now, what was Fireball's last lap? So we have 48.31 from Quadruped. Fireball ran about a hundredth quicker. Let's see if anyone else in that pack. Let's see. NH, did he run something quicker? Oh, yeah. Now, it's not much. It's only a tenth and a half, maybe two tenths from... The separation is, if you can do two tenths a lap, you're not going to catch them, but you'll be able to get at least closer on a pit stop to make up the distance from time lost on pit entry. It's not going to be a lot, but it could be enough, especially if you catch Nelson as he stays in the train. He's kind of the bridge between that first and second pack. They're catching his wake. He's almost a lapper in their eyes. But they, they keep dicing up three or four wide back there. They're never going to get a chance. 
And now the Chef Squid's actually helping the front pack, believe it or not, as they start to single it out. Let's go back to the front. Quadruped leading, though. There's Squid. Let's see what Quadruped does. What's the move going to be? Does he go low? No, Evan H goes a little lower. He's got help from, I believe that's Zion again. Squid with a dangerous block, but he's going to get away with it. Here we go. What? That's not Evan H. I'm sorry. That's the 76. Gunther. 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 I'm sorry about that. The Gunther. Let's see if Gunther... Yeah, he's going to stay with Squid. The squid Zion... being up here being interesting. Yeah, Squid's just playing. Squid, Squid's hoping for two things, right? And may, most most likely caution is number one. Or he stays in this pack, plays an overcut strategy. He can't win the race, Ozzy. He can't finish top 20, but he just tries to get back to the top 30. It's it's slim, but that's his only chance. He plays an overcut strategy, as you can see. Now they're going to ditch him. Ding dong ditch. Fried calamari to the back. All right, here comes Gunther. He's got help from Evan H. Evan H right now starting to sniff it, man. He's had a pretty, what would you say, Zach, mediocre season? Mediocre no. would be a, uh, I would say, uh, lackluster. Lackluster, pretty uh, pretty disappointing for a champion. You know, when you're last in points, pretty much no chance at the playoffs after winning a championship. You might as well get one win at Talladega. It won't make your season, but it'll definitely bring some momentum, especially as you enter the next season. Actually, it'd be his second run of the season. He did win at a Denver Road Course earlier. Okay, Denver Road Course. You know, a second win, it'd make up for it, considering your last in points, but it wouldn't be anything special. It's just Big Mo. That's literally it. Let's see, uh, Evan H right now, Bird, Cody, Forge, Paul, all strong. Jonah's been strong all day. I don't know who to pick in this pack, Zach, as we come to lap 39. 19 to go as you see a big block, almost blocked that Evan H. Bird goes on the inside with some help now from Paul. So we're starting to get into this zone where I think people are really starting to see who's got the best car up front. I noticed the pushers right now that are the best. There's Paulus is one, Jonah Bird is another. I'm telling you, Joy Paints, you got to watch. Joy Paints and Quadruped. I know they had some run-ins at the Glen the first time we went there, but they seem to be working really well together. It might be the way they're set up. I'm not sure. But they know how to cut the inside the best. Watch those guys at the back. They could be something to watch for sure. Uh, now remind me, is, is Talladega a crown jewel too? Yes. We all know about Joy Paints in a crown jewel event. Two for two to start the year. Looking for number three, I believe, on the year on a crown jewel. Yep, that would be correct. Looking for three. And third overall win in the season or fourth? Uh, four, four wins overall. She gets a... Four, yeah. So looking for her fourth win... Technically a third on the Super Speed. Pocono is as they go four wide now. Here we go. Bert to the outside. Will he just play off? He's just going to lay off the throttle. Smart move. Respectful driving. Nothing you can say right there other than just respectful driving. See Joy Paints now and Dripsy. That points battle has been heating up. Zion right there as well. Pushing on the inside line or trying to lead it. There it is, Zach. What did I say? Nelson has been caught and now he's with that pack. Let's see the difference between. Let's go to the ticker. 15th or 16th, watch the gap. I'm thinking four seconds. I think the gap is four. Yep. About 3.6. Let's see the gap right here. From 15th to 16th. Let's see it. Let's see at the line here. Reggie Fogelman has a really good draft, though. 7-7. Seven, seven, two. Nah, they're losing time. They're, they're, just, they're just not single file. They're losing too much time. They're dragging themselves back. They might. I don't think there's a third pack, right? Um, it could be. Is it, is it they really organized, though? That's the question. Yep, there is a third pack. They're not. They're not. Nah, they're worse. They're not organized at all. They're just dicing it up for whatever positions. There are some cars that uh, there's a, even a fourth pack, which is very small. Tough break for Dark and Isaac. Those guys were both to the front con as well. I mean, that just shows you getting on the pit road is going to be how you win this race. There, for Khan, Rain, Isaac, it's probably not meant to be. They're not, they're not going to make up 20 seconds unless we get a caution. Let's go back to the front, though, where Daniel Paulus is at. Okay. Quadruped's good right there. Roach leading this race now down the back stretch we go. 
starting to see some timing. Let's go on board with the little helicopter cam from Roach's point of view as a spotter. All right, here we go. All right, A2 is going to ditch you low. One's going to help the A2. 77, about two car lanes back. Sucking up real good. Sucking up real good down the bottom. 77, no gain. Big gain coming from the 77 on the outside right here. All right, trail break back to the 77. A2 up front. One looking inside, 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 inside. Got big help coming. Big help coming. Okay, stay with it, stay with it, stay with it. 77 now tucked up. Three wide in the back. They're starting to lose steam on the outside. 97 shelled up high. Losing steam on the outside. Losing steam on lane two. Losing steam. One to the outside, one to the outside, one to the outside. Stay up there. All right, perfect. That's good enough. That's perfect. That's basically what it's like to have a 15 car pack. You simulate it. Right now you're thinking less cars. More dynamic in terms of just draft. And a lot more... I guess strategy when you draft. When the pullout's a little different. When you have a 42 car pack, you might as well just pull out with 6, 7 to go. Shuffle to the back and you can get shuffle top 10. If you want to win the race, maybe 11 laps to go. With a 15 car pack, you could pull out with 4 to go reasonably. Go to the back and still get a top 5. If you want to win the race though, your first to last in about 4 laps maybe three laps, and then start running with about two to go. I think you want to be fifth place, Zach, entering with two to go. Whoever's in fifth could be someone to watch unless we get these pit stops and it's just a pack of like four or five. That will be the only difference is when you place yourself on this last pit stop. Usually the second round of pit stops, you want to have the most fuel in the car, which means you want to burn as much fuel here in this, this run right now, and then boom, when you have a couple laps to go, you pay a lap 52 and someone picks a lap 54, less fuel for 54, but you're gonna, you are gonna burn the most fuel right here and save enough, in a way. You can save and burn at the same time, use a little fuel coast, go 50% throttle. That's the winning move, that's the right key to the race. What do you think so far? Almost to go, we're down to 12 to go basically, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I'm thinking we're probably gonna see some guys not make it to the end, probably most of the field. I, I, I would not be surprised to see one, two, maybe three cars uh, that pitted on that uh, ver that on lap 30 on lap 28 or 27 that might might have enough to make it to the end here. But anyone that pitted lap 23 through 26, I I don't think they're gonna make it. 26 could be pushing it. We'll see. They're gonna definitely need to have some luck, I think, in terms of just where you are in the pack and how to save, because it's not looking good for 26. I'm going to tell you right now, I think it's 26 would be 52. That's six laps short. I think you have to almost be someone to pit at lap 28. And you have to hope to save the middle of the pack. Now, the second guys, right, the second pack, they're at an advantage a little bit on the straights, but the corners is where they lose the fuel pickup in a way. With the next-gen car being a little bit more fuel resistant with the EFI, the electronic fuel injection. It usually means they can pick up a little bit on the straights and save a little fuel. Let's say Crown Jr. and ever who leads the pack. The problem is they're losing so much to the corners, they would have to back up to about 48, 7s, 8s consistently and hope to try to make the difference. And right now they're just still too close. Believe it or not, they need to, they need to back up a little bit more with two or three laps to go. Because remember, or two or three laps before the pit stop site, because remember, they can gain about two to three seconds. When someone's pitting, going down to 55 miles per hour, and they're still on the track around 190, you can gain a lot of traction. And a lot of time off a of pit entry and pit exit, that could be the difference between a top 10 finish and getting in that first pack versus going back to 38th where Dark's at. So pit execution and making sure your driver knows how to enter and exit off pit roll will be key. Can't pull a chef's squid error. We just saw it. You go to the blend line. You, you go all four tires. Now two tires is fine, right? Whatever. You go four above, we're going to catch it. That's going to be game over, and it's going to create a lot of chaos. Not just in the point stands, but for your crew chief to say on Monday morning, what were you thinking? Simple execution. Yes, it's on me a little bit, but it's on a driver to know, especially in qualifying trim, when you do a one-lap single-car run, you got to know where the blend line is and test it. That's just a simple error. Back at the front, though, Chasm leads. Let's see what we got. Chef Squid now. Ooh, they gonna try four. No, they. Ooh, Evan H. 
Is he trying four? Oh, I think they are. They do, they did, but they back away. Cody Ford did a great job. Here's the pit stops. 18 didn't make it. Here's the 77. Only two Six. cars. Uh, yeah, well, we got some in the back oh, too. He's but... got some help. Bird's coming. Yeah, this, this ain't gonna work. Oh, he's got, wait a minute. Four cars. Uh, no, you know what? Splash and dash, you, you can tell. You got to come in at lap 52. That's going to be the winning strat. I bet whoever comes in at lap, or the ladies to come in or lap 52 will win this race. I don't think this is going to work. The question is, it did split the pack up. Does that help the four that, oh you know, yeah, split them up big time. It's going to help <sighs> that Evan second H pack up a little bit. What will Evan H do? Does he come in? Does Evan H come in? No. Yes, we got oh, Cody Forge too much on the brakes. Who else is coming in there? Zine? Is that Dripsy? Dripsy, Zine, Gaming Freak. Uh, oh, no, look at this. Look at this behind. Look at this behind. Everyone's, everyone came in in the second pack. I think that's going to trip people up. Yeah, everyone came in. Now we got to go back to Joy Paints. Make sure that entry is good. We'll have to review the tape later. We'll, have to, well I'll probably have to post race it just to make sure everyone was good, but it's okay. We'll remember the pit cycle. Now we'll go back to the see what we'll see where these guys blend out. Let's now keep it on Joy and Burr. Let's see where they blend. They're gonna be the only two. They can only two car tandem from here, but it might work. Here they come, they're coming out. Uh oh, who's that? Is that Nelson? Yeah, they're, oh, they're, they're not going to lose much like I thought they would. Just keep it on, make sure everyone blends. They're going to probably be behind Zion. Is that going to be the leader, though? We'll see what happens. What, 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 now, we're going to wait for Evan H, Paulus, Quad, Cazzo, Eli. Let's see where they come out. Those are the guys pitting the latest. Here they, oh, oh they're right, they're, how are they not speeding there? See what the game does. Kazo, Kazo, Kazo. Is he gonna get down? Still two feet. Oh, he's straddling and he's good. Oh, that's crazy. He shrouded it, but he didn't go all four. Anyone else going all four? Let's see. Where's Joy and Bird? Oh, what did I tell you, buddy? The latest to pit. That's gonna be the difference. I don't think they're gonna have enough to break, but guess what? The latest to pit, the guys that came in the latest. Less fuel, more of a splash and dash than the guys that came in at 49. Those two, three seconds of fuel save you about 60 car lanes on the track. That's a fun fact. That's a fun fact by the freeze. But now, I, let's see how this goes now. Let's see if they can run them down. Yeah, that's 11 cars. Got a huge lead. I think they're going to be able to run them down. This draft's actually pretty well built. Two point, yeah, it's going. To, they're going to get caught. There's no way. Now, if this was the last lap of the race, well played. Six to go. Yeah, it looks like the ones to watch, in my opinion. If Joy Paints and Bird don't break out, let's see anyone else can catch. This is about six cars that can catch them. Cody Forge wants to break the draft, though. It's not helping. You got to stay single file. You're going to catch him if you, unless you go single file. Unless you go, you start doubling up, triple file, and what? Excuse me. They stay single file up the front. Yeah, they're going to get caught, but they may have less uh, maneuverability with the laps. Let's see. The, this is going to be an insane monster lap right here. They're going to cut a quick one. Two down to Leaders one. Leaders in the line. It's going to be a, like a 1.2 second gap. Oh, uh, well. Two, really? They keep dicing it up. Now, the only question is, are they dicing it up that you have more people in the fray? Not to mention, these two are very They're close. Tandeming. They're yeah. two-car tandem. They got it going. They keep it going. They might have a chance. We'll see if they can, can keep they it going it? long enough. This is going to be a good old... Ca now, now, well, now we'll break it up. Cat and mouse now. Who's going to be the rabbit to chase? Will it be Kazo and H that actually break it? Or somehow does the pack, which we think is going to happen, actually stay single file and boom, it's going to be a three-lap dash to the end. Let's see. H got a chance to get in line. He's got a chance. He can't get in line. Yeah, they're, Side they're, 
battling for these laps. Let's see. Is it 1.5 now? Almost. Oh, wait, wait. It's almost. Oh, who's coming out? Chef Squid. Ooh, Chef Squid. Does he interfere with... Oh, he's going to interfere. Big time. Yep. He's going to interfere with the second pack. H and Kazo might get a break. Oh, my goodness. He's staying low to make sure he doesn't mess up here. He didn't want another penalty. Low. Oh, he's, he's going to definitely interfere. He's not up to speed. They're going 199 almost. He's going to go maybe 192 when they catch him. Yeah, it doesn't really is... affect them, but it's going to add another lap to where H and Kazo will have a chance to avoid him. Now, does Squid play nice here and just go up top, or is he blo he's blocking? Not too wow. much slower, but... Not too much of a block, but that's going to... You wow. know what? They, they're there. They're there. That's it. It's game on. Ladies and gentlemen, three laps to go. It's time to get into the serious mode. This is it for the win. H and Kazo have been caught. Gaming is there. He's got Burr on the outside. We talked about Joy Paints and Quadruped being great. Joy's up there. Quadruped? Where's Quadruped? No, he's nowhere to be found. He's in, no, he's back there. He's back there. Hold on. He's got a chance. We talked about being fifth with two with, on the last lap. You want or two to go coming to the lap, be fifth. Because here we go. They've been caught. Now the race is on. 5.12 miles to go. Here we go. Can H or Kazza somehow pull off the win? No. I think that's their shotgun. That's it. It's going to come down to who gets the inside run coming to the white flag. Jonah Burge has been good all day at the front. Can he make an execution move right here? Here we come to the white flag this time. You see Jonah Burge now looking really... Outside, he's looking too high. Who's fifth in line? Is that quadruped? Is that quadruped? It is quadruped. I think he's going to be fifth in line, right? Ah... Uh. Fourth. Yeah, Quadruped's going to win this race if he plays it right. Here we go. Coming to the white flag, Roberto Crown Jr. will be in second. Can we, can Gunther do it? I don't know. Gunther won in Here Darlington. Can Gunther do it? To the white flag we go. Here comes the block. Gunther's going to block low. Here comes Crown Jr. He stays in line. Drummer Chick is now also going to stay in line. They're all staying in line. Where's the move come? Does Crown make the move? He's still staying in line. He's waiting, he's waiting. There's the move. Quadruped Inmates. goes high. Drummer trick three wide? No. Now it's going to come down to who makes the move into the trial. Can Drummer trick push Crown to a win? Crown's going to be low underneath. Here comes Roberto Crown Jr. Fireball's coming into the mix as well. But I think it's going to be Crown Jr. He's going to go to the outside. It's going to be a photo finish break at the cameras. Can Drummer trick get low? Crown blocks it off. Roberto Crown Jr. Talladega loving. He's going to get a win at Talladega Super Speedway. Wow, what a move. That's just great execution, Zach. He blocked the lane. He figured it out. Quadruped had the race, I think, won if he would have timed it better. I think that's what the, the mistake was. Yep, he ended up sixth. Great move for Roberto Crown Jr. Great race at Talladega. Everybody, I believe, finished the race. No yep. issues there. Yep, no finished. mechanicals. The school with that black flag costing him quite big time. Now we'll, re we'll obviously review the tape if there's any more post-race penalties on merger, but Kazo was the only one we'll have to check, really. Everyone else, I think, was clean. Uh, final thoughts, though, Zach. Great race. The playoff battle is now coming down to Michigan. Yeah, I think Chef Squid, he really choked there. That was not what he needed. He'll have to uh, hope some of these guys did not point as well as they did. He had a cushion coming into this. Now it's going to come down to Michigan. That's, it's going to come down to one race for Chef Squid. We'll see if he's able to defend it or not. Uh, so the other guy's uh, Crazy BGD. He's not too comfortable either, but I think he finished. We'll see how he. We'll see how points go, but I don't think he finished that great. Yeah, 34th. Well, a lot of answers going to be. A lot of questions are going to be answered after this. Now, one thing to mention: this is a Birch Crown Jr.'s fifth career win. Uh, not a lot of drivers. Have gotten five wins in their CCS career, uh, so he is moving on up in the in the career stats. But uh, he also keeps his streak alive for two wins a season. 
or at least one win a season, and he keeps that streak alive today with the win at Talladega. Congratulations, Roberto Crown Jr. and Drummer Chick. One, two for the team. It's always impressive. Teammates, we talked about teammates at the top of the show, and we there it was. Great run, though, as well for Gunther. And what a shot for Fireball. I know he's still got a long way to go, but with the, the mistake of Chef Squid, Fireball's still in the Zay. It's going to be... Uh, it's going to be hard, but you know what? You put yourself in position. That's all you can ask for in Michigan. Uh, my last thoughts, great race. Strategy was the way to go. Evan H. and Cazzo had the right move. Unfortunately, got caught. And the pack took care of and swarmed him at the end. But for myself and Zach Malone 3 t it's been a great race at Talladega. The biggest, the best, the boldest, never disappointed. Caution-free. No DNFs. We're signing off. We'll see you at the elimination race at MIS.